Greetings, I'm Anthony L. Elmore, President and founder of the Proud Black Buddhist World Association. My lecture today is Sanskrit language, the ultimate tool used to erase black history. Most blacks have never heard of the Sanskrit language. Unknown and untold is that the birth of racism and white supremacy started in India with the Hindu religion and the caste system. They used the Sanskrit language to erase black history. The Sanskrit language transferred racism to the word black. Let's listen to Dr. Martin Luther King explain how the word black is used to denigrate black people worldwide. Somebody told a lie one day. They couched it in language. They made everything black, ugly, and evil. Look in your dictionary and see the synonyms of the word black. It's always something degrading and low and sinister. Look at the word white. It's always something pure, high, and clean. I want to get the language so right that everybody here will cry out, Yes, I'm black. I'm proud of it. I'm black and beautiful. Ancient Aryan writings, the word Hindu does not exist. Now, it is, how is it that we find the claim that Hindu is the world's oldest religion? Now, let us look at archaeology, anthropology, genetic science, literary science, and linguistic science regarding this matter. Now, the first evidence of Sanskrit language is the Rudra Thena. This is only in the AD. Now, most of the words in Sanskrit come from the black language of Hoskip or Pali. We have archaeological, anthropological, genetic science, literary science, and linguistic science regarding Sanskrit. Yet, we are taught that Sanskrit is the mother of all languages. How could Sanskrit be the mother of all languages when there is no archaeological, anthropological, genetic science, literary science, linguistic science of Sanskrit prior to the AD. See, Sanskrit was written and created by a Brahmin by the name of Panini. Now, Panini used Sanskrit or he used the black language of Pali or Karasi, those languages that the black folks spoke and he created the Sanskrit language. When you study Sanskrit, you will find that most of the Sanskrit words come from the language of the Ethiopian Gese. This is a proven fact. But Sanskrit, ladies and gentlemen, is the way that racists, whites, Japanese, and ignorant black people use Sanskrit to colonize black people. How do you colonize a people? You colonize a people by removing their language, changing their language. When the white people brought slaves to America, it was a penalty of death to speak your language. They make you deaf and dumb because you cannot pass your language. You cannot pass your history and they can teach you or colonize you. That's why it is so important and all of the world is looking at the movie Black Panther and we got the, the world of Wakanda, a world of black people who's never been colonized. You see, ladies and gentlemen, when you colonize and you rewrite the history, you make sure those you colonize do not speak their language. World racism began in India via the religion called Hinduism. Another word for Hinduism is to erase black history. How do you erase black history? You guessed it. 
you use the Sanskrit language. The basis of the Hindu religion is the caste system. Caste comes from the Sanskrit word Varna. Varna means color. The Hindu religion is sanctified racism. India was separated by the colors. Whites at the top and blacks at the bottom. Now, let us go into science regarding the caste system of India. See, a recent genetic study of the caste system was done by Harvard University. It was Harvard University to genetic science revealed that the caste system is only 1900 years old. Now, if you go back 1900 years old and you look at the history of India, what you will find in India, ladies and gentlemen, you will find that 1900 years ago, India was conquered by a white Kushan king. Now, the Kushans were the white people who were generals of Alexander the Great some 400 years earlier who had conquered Afghanistan. Now, the black Brahmins brought these white people into India to conquer the blacks, and they are not only conquered the blacks, they and their ancestors, their lighter skinned ancestors, set up in India what is called the caste system. It was in the second century AD where the white king Kanishka and the Brahmin Ashvagosha separated Buddhism based on race culture and language. What they did was look here at the Gandhara images. They made the Buddha look like Greek. They created the 32 features of the Buddha. They rewrote the history and they changed the Buddha from not only from black to white, they came up with a racist caste system, ladies and gentlemen, and they changed all the language. Now what the people in India did from the time of King Kanishka, it was called the Shaka era. Shaka means foreigners. And they changed Buddhism. They came up with a new racist form of Buddhism called Mahayana Buddhism, which they call Mahayana. A racist term means higher teachings. And those who were associated with black, they called it Hinayana of the lower teachings of Buddhism. But it was Nitrin that taught us that Shakyamuni rejected both Hinayana and Mahayana Buddhism and it is only the Lotus Sutra that is the true teachings of the Buddha Shakyamuni. See, it was Mahayana Buddhism that would eventually take over Japan but not before the black Buddhist history that is hidden by many of our racist Japanese brothers. You see, the first temple or the platform, ladies and gentlemen, of Buddhism was built in the ancient capital of Nara, Japan. And in Nara, Japan, Emperor Shomo in 752 AD created the largest black into a black Buddha statue in the world. Not only is it the largest black Buddha statue in the world, it is the largest Buddha statue in the world that's built out of bronze and gold. Now, our Japanese teachers, the SGI, Nichiren Shoshu, Nichiren Shu, tried to steer you away from this black history and the ancient capital of Nara Japan. But what you see, ladies and gentlemen, you see that black Buddha, you see that black hair. Now, one of the things that we can deal with is that the temple that they built, the platform on Buddhism with the black Buddha, it was called Todaji Temple. Now, what is important about Todaji Temple, that Todaji Temple in Japan is a UNESCO site. That's a United Nations educational, cultural, and scientific organization, UNESCO. It's a UNESCO site. So, this history, or this black Buddhist history is preserved. 
No Japanese is going to tell you that the first people of Japan were black people. No Japanese is going to tell you that the Shogun of Japan was a black man. We got archaeological, anthropological, genetic science, literary science, linguistic science to prove this black history of black people in Japan. Now, what they did was they drew a picture of Nitrin, and when you look at the picture of Nitrin Chonin, you can see that Nitrin was one of the black Japanese. The first people, the oldest people of Japan are the Anu. The first people of China, Japan, and Asia were black people. But the SGI, Nitrin Shoshu, Nitrin Shu, and all these organizations, they educate black Buddhist history. But one thing that the Japanese and the, the history of the images of the movie they can't change. See, whenever you see a statue, an ancient statue of the Buddha, you're going to see that black hair that look like mine. So no matter how white they try to make or all really they try to make the features, whenever you see these see the statues of the Buddha, you are going to see that black hair. But what do our Asian teachers teach us about Namu Mihori Gekyo? They want to extricate the black history from it. You see, the real story of the Buddha in ancient Buddhists we find in the Black Panther movie. We see in Buddhist history the real Wakanda. The Buddha was a real black prince. When you study black Buddhist history, you will find that the ancient black civilizations like Magadha, like Nubia, like Egypt, like Ethiopia, you see black Buddhist history. Ladies and gentlemen, when you ever you look at the Egyptians, you see the Naga. The Naga means snake. And the Buddhists were the Naga people, and you can see the Buddhists. I want you to look at a picture of the Alpha Delta Temple in Naga Sadan, and you will see the Ahsoka Edict. King Ahsoka was a black king and Buddhism was in India as well as Africa because the people were interrelated. I want to share with you a true fact of history. Did you know that the largest, the absolute largest religious writing in the world is the Pali Canon? that was written in 29 BC in what we call Ceylon, which is now Sri Lanka. They had the fourth Buddhist council. And at the fourth Buddhist council, they got together and wrote down the Buddhist teachings. And when they wrote down the Buddhist teachings, they wrote it down in the language of Pali. If you take the Jewish Torah, you take the Christian Bible, and the Islam teachings, the writing of Islam, if you take all of those writings and combine them, the Pali Canon is four times larger than all three of the religions put together. So it was the Pali Canon. People were spoke the Pali or the Paschic language. Let me tell you the story about ancient Nubia. The father of history, Herodotus, he visited both India and he visited Egypt. And what Herodotus writes is that both countries were black people. They were different only, they were the same only in their hair texture. But other than that, they were black people, the same black people, ladies and gentlemen. It was Herodotus that visited Nubia. And Herodotus wrote that Nero, the capital of Nubia, was the cradle of the gem, the sophist. The word gem means naked, and sophist means philosophers. And he wrote that they were of a kind nature. 
a dignified nature. He wrote about the Buddhist. Our Buddhist ancestors, ladies and gentlemen, was in Africa. Buddhism was in Africa, but what are Japanese teachers who teach us Buddhism? They teach us Hindu Buddhism. They teach us Sanskrit. And when you study Sanskrit, or when you learn Mahayana Buddhism, you must understand that Mahayana Buddhism, all black history, culture, and language was extricated. You see, now this is what happened. They found, just recently, ladies and gentlemen, they found in a tub, they found bark writings. These were bark writings of 1900 years ago. They found bark writings of the language that was spoken in India. Now, they got these writings, and this is what was written. It says, quote, Moreover, the discovery of a substantial corpus of Buddhist manuscripts in the Ganhari language support the Ganhara hypothesis proposed by Ernest Weinsmith, John Worrells, and other scholars. According to this theory, at least some of the earliest Chinese translations of Buddhist texts were prepared from originals and not in Sanskrit as previously assumed but rather than hurry since the existence of such a body of Ganhara literature is now a matter of fact. Rather than hypotheses, there is good reason to believe that the newly discovered manuscripts are closely related to the archetypes of the earliest Buddhist texts in Chinese. Thus, these new discoveries constitute a missing link between Buddhism and its Indian homeland and its later manifestations in China and other parts of Asia. In other words, they found a missing link. It is no doubt that there was no such thing as Sanskrit and the Buddhist language was that of Karasi as or Ganhara as they found in the archaeological manuscripts. There is no archaeological evidence, no archaeological anthropological, genetic science, literary science, linguistic science of a language called Sanskrit because it did not exist. Now, let us move back to the movie The Black Panther. Why is the Black Panther movie important? The Black Panther movie is a movie where as the first time in history of America and the world we see Africa as a non-colonized state. We see what Africa would be like without white racism, without white colonization. That's why the movie is so attractive because black people are not and were not colonized. Our ancient ancestors were not colonized or taught by white people. We are the masters and the originators of civilization. Now, please understand that it was just a recent, recent genetic study where science proved that light skin is only happened 8,000 years ago. There were black people in Europe who were black people. They had straight hair, they were black skin and blue eyes and they changed and they became what is known today as white people. But these are our people. We are all, we are not, there's no such thing as race. Race is a social construct, ladies and gentlemen. Now, let us move to explaining the spoken language of the Buddha. We have archaeology, archaeology anthropology, genetic science, literary science, and linguistic science. Wherever we can, without a doubt, prove the spoken language of the Buddha. In order to understand the phrase, Namo Nyoho Renge Ko, when you study the language and history of the Buddha, you must delineate Buddhism from colonization 
and Buddhism of pre-colonization. See, like in the movie Black Panther, ancient India was never colonized. Early India was known as Eastern Ethiopia. The first civilization was called, and it was called the Indus Valley Civilization. Now, they were also called the Saravati River Civilization, where this civilization was twice as large as Egypt and Mesopotamia put together. They don't tell black people about these great civilizations because it was 2,000 years before people who were known as whites could even have city planning as well executed as that of the Saravati River civilization or the Indus Valley civilization. It was only when Rome came about some 2,000 years later. But what they write in their writings, they came up with a false writing called the Vedas. They were called the Hindu Vedas and the Hindu Vedas came up with a false theory called the Aryan Invasion Theory. And they took those theories and they took all the false writings and they created a false religion called Hinduism where that put blacks at the bottom and whites a light skin at the top. You see, in order to get an understanding of the world and colonization and racism, we have to look at history. We do not find evidence of racism in ancient world history. Most of the people of the world ancient history were black. Let us move to Egypt, Nubia, Assyria, Persians, Egypt. These were black people. These early ancient world were black people and it was about 400 BC. They're about when Alexander the Great conquered Egypt. Alexander outsmarted the Persians and his army was not as large as the Persian army but Alexander the Great outsmarted them. He eventually took over Egypt. Now this is the evidence of we have of white people conquered black people. Now, let us move into India. Alexander tried to conquer India, but he ran up against some bad black folk called the Nandas. The Nandas had 80,000 elephants, and Alexander says, hell to the no. Alexander bagged away. Now, it was another group of people called the Muriams. Now, the Muriams later would conquer the Nandas, and they created uh, the Muriam dynasty that was created in India. And in the Mauryan dynasty, it was Chandragupta Maurya who was the great conqueror. And his grandson was named Ahsoka. Ahsoka the Great. Ahsoka the Great was a great warrior and he killed so many people, but he converted to Buddhism. And he would later spread Buddhism. Now what's important to understand about King Ashoka was he left writings, he left edicts, he carved it into the language of Karasi and he spread at these writings all over the world. So we have written, we have archaeological, anthropological, we have genetic science, literary science. It was only in 185 BC where the Brahman, there's a black Brahman by the name of Push Yamitra, he killed the last Muslim king, Burhata, Burhata, he killed him and they set up a Hindu cult. And what they did was they killed all the Buddhists and the Buddhists had to run to move in with their brothers in Nubia. They left India because they put a bounty on Buddhism and from Buddhism it came. The Brahmin set up a new religion and they created a new religion and this new religion, ladies and gentlemen, was called Hinduism. And Hinduism is another word for colonization because they were able to colonize Buddhism. They put the Buddha in what is known as the Hindu Hathion. They made the Buddha a subordinate god to the god Rome. You see, so this is how this happens. People in India did not practice the religion that King Kanishka had because what King Kanishka did to Buddhism, uh, with his new Mahayana Buddhism, he separated Buddhism by race, culture, and language. In fact, this white Kushan king 
created his own sacrament for Buddhist council and he changed the language and all the writings of Buddhism to the language of Sanskrit. And this Mahayana Buddhism would eventually spread to Korea, to China, Korea, and eventually make his way to Japan. Now, it was Nichiren Shonen, the 13th century black Buddhist sage who read through all the sutras and it was Nichiren who first chanted Namu Myoho Rinke Kyo. Now, when you look at the Gohanzan, now let me show you the Gohanzan. The Gohanzan is the scroll that Nichiren chanted. Down the center of the Gohanzan is Namu Myoho Rinke Kyo. And there are so many God, black gods on this Gohanzan, it looks like a black history book. Now, the character here, to the left, Rishomon, he is called the Black Warrior. You got the Naga Kings, you got all these black gods. Now, these symbols right there are called Bija Seeds. Now, the SCI Nichiren Shoshu, they teach you that those are Sanskrit characters. There's a sutra that was written before Sanskrit ever did it called the Bija Sutra. And the Bija Seed is a seed, and these are the gods. So, you got the gods Cravefield, and so you got these Buddhist gods. Now, the language that the Buddha spoke, see, the Buddha spoke the language of Paschal, of Pali. Now, understand, it was only in 406 AD that the language or the Lotus Sutra was translated. It was translated by a Indian scholar by the name of Kumar Rajiva. Kumar Rajiva came from the outskirts of India. His dad was a priest and he was a scholar. He was captured by the Chinese and they forced him to marry. And he went, Nam Yo Ho Renge Ko. It ain't Sanskrit, it ain't Chinese. It is the black language of Pali, or Proskip, or Karasi. It is a black language and Yo Ho Renge Ko. Namu Yohori Geko is the original language of our black and I am Anthony Amdomo, president and founder of the Brown Black Buddhist World Association.